morning. What a wonderful day to gather to praise and worship our Lord and, and an uh, opportunity today for three to come and give their public testimony <coughs> to our Lord and Savior, their Lord and Savior. Um, these waters that we are about to baptize them in are, is water. Uh, they are already saved. Uh, when they uh, repented of their sin and, and gave full of sin and faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they were saved. But they're also being obedient to what Christ commanded us, and that is to be baptized by immersion. And so today, uh, these three have come to give their public testimony and do just that. So with that, Kendall. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, my name is Kendall Gregory. One night when I was seven, my parents were doing a youth group and we behaved terribly for the ladies watching us. That night was the worst I'd ever felt and it wasn't like other times when I felt bad because I was caught. I knew I was wrong and that was the first time I asked God for forgiveness. Three years later, on Tuesday night, we were sitting in my room and I knew I was a sinner and needed Christ. On May 7th, 2019, I was saved to stay and obeying God's command and being baptized. and faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you as a sister. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. and she's asked me to read her testimony for her. My journey with Christ started in a loving Christian home. I've always known that we as humans need a Savior, so I never had one specific moment where I was convicted of all the sin in my life. The first time I really knew I wanted Jesus in my life, I was seven. At that age, I learned more about Christ in Awanas and church. Believed in Him, but didn't have a true relationship with Him yet. I learned more as I grew up and prayed daily. In sixth grade, though, I really struggled spiritually. Despite going to church for so many years, I found myself doubting God. I didn't understand how God had done it all, creating so much from nothing. After sixth grade, I went to His Hill Camp for the first time. My experience there really immersed me in the Word, Bible studies, chapel, and devotionals every day. It really helped me to know Christ better and how to have a personal relationship with Him. Going to camp and hearing some of the counselors got me to realize that Jesus is the one who saves us from hell. I also realized the weight of my life of sin. The following year in seventh grade, I worked on knowing more about Him. In eighth grade, I started reading my Bible more. I've been able to brush my doubts aside and root my beliefs in faith. All the knowledge of God cannot fit into our brains. We have limits as humans, but God has no limits. We're not able to fully understand the full power and beauty of Jesus. But as I continue to grow in my journey, I now have a passion to follow and be more like him. I accept him as my one true savior. Ephesians 4 tells us to, be, to live a life worthy of our calling, and this includes baptism. I'm choosing to be baptized today to follow the example Jesus, Jesus, set by Jesus. Amen. Because of your profession and faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you as a sister. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Y'all were expecting another teenager, right? <laughs> I'm just trying to balance out the age average. <laughs> uh, my name is Jimmy Hooks. If you 
you don't know me now, if you don't, I want to meet you because I, I, I just want to come here. I was wanting to do this for several years, uh, especially after a, a, a great man, uh, Dave Bender, came in here one day, and everybody, I'm mean, like, why stay there? And and he had a terrible condition. But uh, thank God I don't have that. But anyway, he just said, I just want to be everything right to be with me and God. And that's why I'm here. And I'll try to get through this. <coughs> I, was, I was raised by an outstanding mother and father. They're good Christian people there for work. Uh, I'm a raised Methodist. Uh, but about 10 days after I turned 15, my father got killed in a hunting accident. And uh, I won't go into any detail on all that. It was, it was, he made a mistake. And uh, that's all it takes when you're hunting. Uh, and so, after my father got killed, it wasn't long, and, and I became very angry. And uh, I was, I was not only mad at him for leaving; I got real mad at God for taking him. And so, I turned to a whiskey bottle, and a whiskey bottle leads to. A lot of stuff, gambling, and et cetera, et cetera. And anyway, though, but I did, and I fought God. And this went on uh, for years and years and years. And uh, I'm going to fast forward to 2006. Uh, we were living in. Uh, Imperial, no, in 2000, okay, let me go back. In, in the 2000 and, and, and the 80s, uh, 1980s, uh, early 80s, we were living in Hobo, California. And Carol and Patricia were going faith into a Baptist church in El Centro, and they started a new church in, in Hobo, or really, uh, Jerry Falwell days, and, and so they started a new startup church, and they wanted to go there. Trisha's friends were all there, high school friends and everything. And so they wanted to go there. And so I started going with them. Uh, and uh, they had a great young pastor that was from the, the college here. And he did a great job. And uh, I actually got to know him very well. And he actually went, he'd ride around with me in the afternoon when I would go out and check him for a leather tank and stuff. And so, but uh, I joined the church. Uh, rededicated my life to Christ and um, was baptized by immersion. But the pastor left. They called him and they wanted him back at the school. I don't I understand that. And so it, he went back and I quit going. Uh, I didn't like the other pastor. Uh, so uh, that ended that. And uh, but uh, when I when I first came to the Lord, when I was about 10 or 12, I was, you know, I was sprinkled. And, uh, I mean, my heart, I mean, I was 10 or 12 years old. I didn't, I don't know that I knew what I was doing. And then when I was baptized again uh, at 40-something, uh, uh, I realized now that my heart probably wasn't right. And I just, I, I just won't. This, this is a very important part of, I think, of your Christian law, it, it is a baptism, and I didn't want that to happen now. We'll fast forward to 2006, we're living in Bismarck, North Dakota, and we had been there for a couple of years, and when we got there, Carol said, uh, I need to find a church. Well, um, I went with her, I, I, and she found a church, and we found a church, and it was actually a, a, a 
an outstanding church. I, uh, the pastor uh, taught the expo, you know, expository uh, teaching, and and I started to learn a little bit about what the Bible said because I didn't have a clue, to be honest, because uh, I never had been in the Bible, and uh, so anyway, it was it was great, and and so. We went, and uh, but I, once again, I say I, I fought out all of the years, and uh, this particular week in, in mid February, we had a, a, a company event in uh, Reno, Nevada, and uh, it's Reno, just a little Vegas, and so you can imagine what goes on uh, and went on. And uh, anyway, I came back middle of the week, I don't know, like Wednesday night or Thursday, I don't remember what day it was, Wednesday night, Thursday night. And I went to the bar. God, God put me down in the He slammed on me. And I just, I just, I don't know, I just lost, I lost all hope. I lost, I didn't care about him or dying. I just, I just was gone. And I didn't know God would ever think for a reason, and, and I didn't know the reason. But anyway, so, we go to church Sunday, and uh, the pastor uh, when he got up, uh, came to the pulpit. He said, "I've never done this before." But he said, "There's there's some people in here that are hurting and hurting bad." And he says, "I think they need prayer." So he asked all the pastors and the wives to come down. And they did. And when they did, uh, I just got up. I never thought. I just got up and I walked down that aisle. And uh, I walked up to a pastor named Roger Will, who was a wonderful pastor, wonderful man. Uh, Roger was about my age, which at that time would have been 62. Uh, anyway, he, uh, he, uh, he asked me, uh, Jimmy, how can, how can I pray for you? And I said, Roger, I've never said it. I'm an alcoholic. It's killing me. It's killing my family and it's killing my friends. And I can do nothing about it. Nothing. I have tried for 47 years. And I said, please pray that God will take it from me so that I deserve him. And Roger started praying. Uh, I don't know. I, Roger was a pretty good-sized guy. Anyway, I just started to feel like my legs melted on me. <laughs> and he just started putting his arms under my, his hands under my arms, started helping me up. I held on his shoulders. My body became just soaking wet, with sweat all over. And, uh, and uh, but Roger prayed, and I just sobbed and sobbed. And he kind of said, uh, are you okay? And I said, yeah. And I walked back up the aisle. Now, fast forward to now, that was 16 and a half years ago, I guess. And uh, I've never had a drink since then. But uh, truly, uh, And the thing that shows it, God took it. I didn't, I didn't get away. God took it was the fact that I've never wanted one. And I spent, you know, a couple more years working, and I was around the same crew that uh, that uh, I did all the drinking with. And uh, but God blessed me there that I got to stand up before the whole Western Business Unit of the company I worked for two years in a row and uh, testify and give them my testimony. And uh, of course, most of them said, "Well, that won't work. It won't happen." He's quit drinking a million times. But guess what? Uh, I think because of that, yeah. I know one one that I know that loves the Lord now, and and I just praise God for that. So my my hope is taking a part of time, but uh, if there's anybody out there, any of you, I don't care if man, woman, young or old, if there's anything, anything that keeps you from God, please, please. Uh, it may be alcohol, it may be it may be anger, it may be pride, it may be pornography, I don't know what it is, but 
if something is there that's interfering with your with your walk with God, please call one of you. you you've got all got a elder. Call them. They don't, you know, if you need somebody to pray with you, please. Please. And I, I just pray that and I my my second prayer for you is uh, don't give up if you know somebody that has a condition. It isn't you, but you know somebody you love and has something that's deep in them from God. Please, don't quit praying. My wife never quit praying for all those years. My daughter didn't quit praying. My mother was 91 years old when I was 62. She had never quit praying. And you know what? It worked. And I thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Bye. Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you as a brother. In the name of the Father and the Son yeah. and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your calling of us to yourself. Father, we know that um, these testimonies today and witnesses that, again, as I said, they, they are saved. They have been saved. But, Father, their public testimony of being baptized, uh, going through the command that you asked them to. Father, these waters represent our death, burial, and resurrection in you, Lord. And so, Father, we thank you for that, Lord, for your sacrifice for us. Father, and for the representation of the washing of our sin, even though we... We walk now uh, as believers in you, uh, Father, the, the struggle of sin never leaves us. And so we thank you for your word, for our brothers and sisters, for um, your availability through the Holy Spirit that you have uh, given us, that we may know you and persevere through it. And so, Father, we thank you for these three, and I ask that you would bless our time together now.